Hi guys, thanks for visiting my channel today. I'm really excited for today's video because we are gonna do something new and different for me. We are going to be steam canning tomatoes today. Now, in light of full disclosure, I have to admit to a dumb blonde moment. Um, you know how I've been raving about my, my new Victorio uh, water bath canner? I got it several months ago and I've been singing its praises ever since. Well, I did not realize this, but it is also a steam canner. So um, I had a subscriber that uh, commented on one of my videos that she had the same canner and she loved it because it was also a steam canner. And I'm like, a steam canner, really? So as I looked through my paperwork, it is indeed a steam canner. And it also says that in the description on Amazon where I purchased it. But I guess I just, I didn't read the manual that came with it. I thought I knew everything I needed to know about water bath canning. And the person that I learned about it from never mentioned it being a steam canner. So, um, dumb blonde moment. Um, did kind of what men do with instruction, with directions they never ask. Well, I didn't read my manual like I should have. So dumb blonde moment. I apologize. We could have been steam canning a couple months ago. But anyway, we are going to steam can today. And I apologize for my, um, for being remiss and knowing <laughs> oh, everything there's to know about my steam canner or about my canner. So just a lesson learned. Make sure you read all the paperwork that comes with any new kitchen gadget or kitchen toy that you purchase, even if you think you know everything about it, you may not. So anyway, I'm excited because we're gonna be steam canning and that's something totally new for me. And I've had several of you contact me and ask me if I could do videos on steam canning. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to steam can tomatoes, as you can tell in the title. Now, um, I've talked about how our garden was not doing so well. We planted, my poor husband had to plant, replant three times because we got all those torrential rains uh, earlier in the season and it completely drowned our garden. So um, he replanted and now we've got tomatoes coming on and they're nice size, but now they're not ripening because the evening temperatures are dropping 50 and below 50 some nights it's been and you need at least 70 degree temperatures for them to ripen so I know it is going to warm up coming up this next week some more again so we may get a few out of my garden but I'm not going to get nearly as many as I need so this morning my husband stopped by the bar farmer's market here in town and look what he found treasure trove of beautiful Roma tomatoes which is what you want for tomato sauce which is what I'm mostly interested in is making tomato sauce with them. They're a nice meaty tomato and that's typically what I like to can. Anyway, they are from an Amish owned farm called Moreland Fruit Farm. They have all kinds of things. Um, pick your own berries and grapes, pumpkins, apples. Uh, they're starting to make fresh apple cider there. Um, they have pumpkins and fall squash, mums, all kinds of stuff. So, but they also come to our town, which is Delaware, Ohio. And so if you are in central Ohio or northern Ohio near Wooster, they're located in Wooster, you can stop by and get you some farm fresh goodies there, especially for the fall. Um, and I'm not sure if they do any other um, farmers markets. Um, I know they're here in our town, but I don't know if they do any others, but you can certainly stop by and it's Moreland Fruit Farm. And I will list it for you in the description box. Um, really nice people that run it and um, I'm so glad that I found them. Anyway, I have three and a half of these boxes full of tomatoes. So we are going to can them up today. Now my favorite way to can tomatoes is just I raw pack them in water and then either water bath. You can water bath can them or you can um, pressure can them, either one, it's just your timing is different. Uh, water bath canning, you have to process them longer. And, but today we're gonna steam can them and steam canning, the timing is the same as it is for water bath canning. So it's pretty much the same thing. You just use less water and it comes up to temperature quicker. So your processing time doesn't take quite as long. So I'm really excited to show you this today. So we are going to get started. Uh, the first thing we have to do is get the tomatoes washed 
and prepped, you wanna, um, I blanched them in hot water and then put them in an ice bath, slip the skins off, remove the cores, and um, then they're ready for canning. So let's get started. Okay guys, my water is ready, so here we go. So you want some, you want a pot of boiling water and you wanna have an ice bath ready and then a bowl to put your um, skinned tomatoes in and a bowl to put your waste in. So, and I need my parry knife. So we're just gonna go ahead and put, I don't know, four or five tomatoes in our water. And it takes 30 to 60 seconds for the skins to start to split. Once that happens, you just put them in your ice bath, slip the skins off, and then just keep continuing. Super easy. Therapeutic mindless work. guys we are ready to can it took me about an hour to uh, peel all of my tomatoes aren't they beautiful I'm so excited about this so what I have going on is I'm gonna pack mine raw in hot water now you can I said earlier you can pressure can them you can pack them you can hot pack them or you can raw pack them you can add water you can not add water or you can even add juice so there are different ways to can tomatoes so you need to understand each method so today for today's video i'm going to raw pack because that's my favorite way of canning foods if i if if safety guidelines state that i can raw pack something then i do so we're going to raw pack in water and um for the for the sake of this video that's what we're doing but just know that there are other methods of canning tomatoes this is not the only one so and like i said we're going to steam can now for the Victorio canner, uh, you when you are raw packing, the uh, canning instructions that came with my canner said that you want three quarts of water in the bottom of your pot, which is what I have, and you want it when for raw packing it should be around 140 degrees. And I just tested mine, measured the. Uh, temperature and it it is right around 140 degrees and then I've showed you before on the lid when we're ready to start timing it's got different zones I am in the blue zone because I'm zero to three thousand feet so that's another point it's important for you to know what your altitude is um, so you know what zone and when it's when I can start timing it will be in the green area so I think you can see that okay. Um, so that's important. Know your attitude, altitude, and um, know so that you know when to start timing. And anytime you're canning, you must know your altitude. That is important for your time. We are canning in quart jars, so we are gonna be canning for 45 minutes. Canning instructions for steam canning, as far as times go, and packing your food and all that is the same as water bath canning. There's nothing different. So, um, so I'm gonna set the lid aside for now. So for the Victorio canner, using this as a steam canner, 
the instructions for that is like I said to heat your water three quarts of water in the bottom which is way less than you need when you're water bath canning so one of the advantages to steam canning is you're going to use way less water and which means that it will take less time for it to come up to temperature so and then your rack is important for steam canning you usually you have and I need to fix this this is my only complaint <laughs> these needed to be tighter it it comes on the handles come undone anyway I'll have my husband fix that but anyway usually it's this way for water bath canning for steam canning you're gonna fold your handles inside of the rack and then you're going to flip it over and your jars will sit on top of the bottom of the rack and you can um, it but it's the same amount of jars it's it'll hold seven quart jars or nine pints so we're going to hopefully get our seven quart jars in here um, i did have about 20 we're guessing but it's about 20 pounds of tomatoes so i should get seven quarts out of the big box of tomatoes that you saw so i'm going to go ahead and put my base in there and the water should come up about to the bottom of your um, rack. So, and then I have hot water here since I'm packing in water. It's almost to simmering and that's what we want. Um, modern canning guidelines state, and you've heard me talk about this a lot, that you do not have to sterilize your jars and lids if you're going to be canning for longer than 10 minutes, and we are. So my jars are squeaky clean, as are my lids. My lids I just washed and set aside. My jars are in hot water. You don't want to risk thermal shock, so you always want to start with a hot jar. So here we go. I do two jars at a time. You can do whatever works for you. And I just keep my jars hot in a sink of super hot water. Now, uh, my, the instructions for canning do state that you have to acidify your tomatoes. And I know people, this confuses people because they're, they always say tomatoes are already acidic. Why do I need to add acid? It's been tested and no matter what way you're canning tomatoes, you must add acid, acid to them to be safe. And uh, you can add citric acid, which is what I'm going to use today, or you can add bottled lemon juice, and it must be bottled lemon juice, not fresh. I don't wanna add any flavor to my tomatoes, so I'm going to use citric acid, and you can, uh, lots of companies make it, um, but I always buy ball, because it's convenient citric acid and we are going to add a half of a teaspoon to each jar so that's the first thing I'm going to do is add a half of a teaspoon of my citric acid and then this is totally optional I like to salt mine so I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt per quart jar if you are doing pints you would use a half of a teaspoon but it's totally optional you do not have to use salt at all so we are going to go ahead and pack our tomatoes as tightly as possible in our jar really pack mine in there oops slippery little guys because I want a nice full jar of tomatoes Okay, so we have our tomatoes in our jar. So now we're going to, and you want, we're looking for a half of an inch headspace, and I need my funnel. So we're going to go ahead and fill it with hot water. The instructions say to fill your jar with tomatoes to half, a half of an inch headspace and then add your water. And then when we did debubble, your headspace may change a little bit. And 
and you may need to add more water. So mine's to the top, so I'm gonna go ahead and debubble. Just go around your jar with your debubbling tool. And I did, it did make space for more liquid. So I'm gonna have to add more water to that jar. That's why debubbling is important, you guys, because your headspace can change when you release the air bubbles at the bottom of your jar. down in there to get my half inch head space and then I'm going to dip my paper towel in white vinegar to make sure the rim of my jar is really clean so nothing will inter interfere with my jars sealing and then we're going to center our lid and then add your ring to fingertip tight. And then lower your jar on top of your rack. guys that is the last of my seven jars and I still have quite a few tomatoes left so that box is going to can uh, way more than we thought I'm probably going to get three more jars so I'll probably get ten jars per box which I'm really happy about anyway so um, you know typically I take my vinegar and pour it in my water to keep my jars nice and clean to keep the deposit, mineral deposits in our water from collecting on the outside of my jars. I'm not going to do that because my jars are not submerged in water. So I don't feel the need to do that. So we're going to go ahead and put our lid on. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change burners because this burner is bigger. and we are going to crank up our heat till it comes up to temperature and when my gauge gets in the green area we're going to start timing it. I'm going to let you know how long it takes to come up to temperature and see kind of do a little bit of a comparison to water bath canning to see if it's saving us any time. So when we get there I'll bring you back. Okay you guys that was really fast. It is only taking not taking about nine minutes for me to get into my uh, zone to start timing. So I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for 45 minutes. That's for my altitude and for quart jars. If you are doing pint jars, I believe it's 40 minutes. So the 
couple of important things about this canner and using it for steam canning is um, you do not want it to boil vigorously the whole time that you are canning. So it's important to adjust your heat, and I talk about this um, in almost all my other videos with water bath canning or with uh, pressure canning. You don't want it to, you don't want your heat to be on high the whole time. So you wanna adjust your heat and you just wanna make sure you're, it's hot enough to keep it in your, um, your go zone, which is the green area. Um, so I'm gonna turn mine down to about a medium and make sure that it stays there. And um, so that's what we're, that's what you're looking for. You just don't want it to go boil vigorously the whole time because you run the risk of your canner going dry. So let's talk a little bit about steam canning. I can find it. Okay. Um, and this, I went to the National Center for Home Food Preservation and they give you a few background paragraphs and then they link you to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, um, their extension office website because apparently that's where the research was done for steam canning. And I just want to go over a few things about steam canning because there's not a lot out there about it. Most people water bath can. Um, so I just want to go over a few, a few things about steam canning. Um, and you guys know I'm a safety girl, so I would not be doing this if there was any question about it being safe. So um, I'm just going to read to you kind of what she's outlined. It says, not everyone is aware that several years ago, the University of Wisconsin published research, which indicates that steam, a steam canner may be safely used for canning naturally acid foods, such as peaches, pears, and apples, acidified foods, such as salsa or pickles, and jams and jellies, as long as all of the following criteria are met. So this is your criteria. The next points that I'm gonna make is the criteria for steam canning. Foods must be high in acid with a pH of 4.6 or below. Um, either a boiling water canner or a steam canner can be used to safely preserve foods high in acid. So any food that you can water bath can, you can steam can. A research tested recipe developed for a boiling water canner must be used in conjunction with the steam canner. And you guys know I'm a stickler about this. If you've watched any of my canning videos, you know I talk and talk and talk about this using a tested, trusted recipe. Not something passed down from grandma, um, not something that your friend told you, and not something that you just get off of any website at a whim. You cannot trust everything that's out there so i highly encourage you that if you find a recipe that you want to can that you research it with the fda the national center for home food preservation ball fresh preserving all of those places your local extension office and make sure that that recipe is telling you the right thing um check this yep we're still good so, um, because I made that mistakes when I first started learning to can because I trusted everything that I read on the internet and I realized that later on that I had done some things wrong just because I trusted just anybody's recipe. Oh, that sounds good. Let's do that. And it wasn't right. So please, please, I highly urge you. And I know there are adventurous canners out there and I'm, I'm not putting anyone down. But for my channel, I'm not going to show you anything that... The, the, if there's any question about it being safe and I always use a tested trusted recipe and for steam canning it is really important to do that that's one of the points that they make so um, approved recipes can be found in extension publications or from the National Center for Home Food Preservation Processing and Preservation a the booklet accompanying the steam canner can't be relied on to provide safe canning instructions so don't just rely on that um, and the other one that is totally safe, you can trust all their recipes, is Ball Fresh Preserving. They research all their recipes. Um, jars must be processed in pure steam at 210 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature should be monitored with a thermometer placed in the vent port. Steam has to flow freely from the canner vents during the entire process or the food is considered unprocessed or unsafe. Now the uh, victorio it has two holes in the lid and that's where my steam is coming out so i know that i'm good there 
Um, the other thing that uh, came with the instructions for my Victoria canner was to not lift the lid and you should never do that in water bath canning either because if you open your canner then you run the risk of changing the temperature inside your pot so don't do that and it's really important to not do that with steam canning um, let's see jars must be filled prior to Jars must be heated prior to filling and filled with hot liquid for either raw or hot, hot packed foods. Tested recipes approved for half pint, pint, or quart jars may be followed. So you can use half pint, pint, or quart jars. Um, there are pint and a half jars. You just need to process them. It doesn't say that you can use pint and a half jars, but those are always processed the same as quart jars, so I don't know why that would be a problem. But it doesn't say that, so if you want to be a stickler, I would not use uh, pint and a half jars. I would stick with half pint, pint, or quart jars. Processing time must be modified for elevation as required by a tested recipe. So we talk about that all the time. Know your altitude and what adjustments you need to make. Processing time must be limited to 45 minutes or less, including any modification for elevation. So I'm processing for 45 minutes, so I'm at the upper end. I'm at the very limit of what you can, um, the time that you can use to process things. So if any, if you're canning something that has to be water bath canned for longer than 45 minutes, you cannot steam can it. Uh, the processing time is limited by the amount of water in the canner base, which makes sense. When processing food, the canner should not be open to add water. Regulate heat so that the canner maintains a temperature of 210 to 212 degrees. A canner that is boiling too vigorously can boil dry within 20 minutes, and that's why it's important to adjust your heat. And I can adjust mine further, it looks like, because it's definitely beyond the limit of the green zone for me. So if a canner boils dry, the food is considered under-processed under and therefore potentially unsafe. So not only do you run the risk of um, harming your canner, your food that you were canning is considered unsafe. Um, cooling of the jars must occur in still ambient air. Cooling is important for safety. Jars should be cooled on a rack or towel away from drafts. Jars should not be placed in the refrigerator to hasten the cooling process, and that is just standard across the board. Um, good canning practice. They need to cool on a towel um, in your kitchen um, or wherever you're canning. <laughs> ambient air, still ambient air they're calling it. So you don't want to try to hasten the process, the cooling process ever, not just for steam canning, for any kind of canning. So um, I will link this website so that you can go there and read it all for yourself and know that what we're doing here is safe. Um, the Victorio canner, uh, this one is just built a little differently than most um, water bath canner or steam canners. And they, Victorio does make one that is a steam canner that looks more like a traditional steam canner. And if you look up steam canners, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a small base and then a larger dome lid that sits on top. And we're still in our green zone, so we're good to go. I'm going to continue processing and um, then I will bring you back when we're done. The rules apply the same as water bath canning when our time is up. We're gonna turn the heat off, remove the lid, wait five minutes, and then we can remove our jars. So that's what we're gonna do. Sorry for all the racket in the background, something exciting going on outside for the babies. So I will see you in a bit. Okay guys, our time is up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat off. I have to tell you that I think I'm really loving this steam canning thing. I could turn my heat down much lower than I could when I normally water bath can. So that's a little bit of savings in electricity or gas or whatever you're using. So I'm loving that. And the nine minutes it took to, um, to come up to temperature for me to start timing, that was probably a third of the time that it normally would take to get all that water up to the time. And I, to be honest and fair, I, I've never timed that. Um, I always just kept an eye on my canner, but I know it takes close to 30 minutes for that to happen. So, so we're gonna do just what we um, normally do, my pot holder, uh, with water bath canning, is we're just we're gonna turn the heat off and then we're going to remove our lid 
away from us so we don't get a steam bath. Um, and my, uh, I watched my, the little dial the whole time and it stayed very nicely in the green comfort zone the whole time on a much lower temperature. So loving that. So we're gonna let our jars sit just like we would for any water bath canning recipe in our canner for five minutes and then we'll take them out. So when our five minutes are up, we'll bring you back. Okay guys, our five minutes are up. So it's time to take out our jars. Beautiful, delicious tomatoes. Now, it's something that I, um, we don't talk about a whole lot, I guess. I don't know that I've ever talked about it on my channel, but as I was doing some research on the steam canning, um, it was brought to my attention. When you set your jars out to cool, you wanna make sure you give them plenty of room around them. You really don't, and I'm, I've been guilty of this, you really don't want to sit them so close to each other that they can't cool well. They really need to be able to have some airflow around them to cool correctly. Um, so just something to think about. And there are our beautiful steam canned tomatoes. So um, I still have about an inch of water in my canner. Uh, but I can see how that could easily run dry if you're not careful. So what are your thoughts on steam canning? Um, I think this is fabulous. It saved me some time. It saved me water and it saved me a little bit in energy and it seemed to work really well. And to top it off, I have one um, pot that does canning two ways. Plus it, you can use it for, to make large batches of soup or stock or anything like that. So it's very, very versatile. So I highly recommend it if you are in the market for a new steam canner, water bath canner, or stock pot, I highly recommend this one. I've really enjoyed using it all three ways now. So I will link it in the description section for you. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section about the steam canning. Do you guys wanna see more steam canning? Do you think you prefer water bath canning? What are your thoughts? Um, I will also link in the description section, um, like I said before, um, where I got all my information about the safety of steam canning and how to do it. Uh, so you have all that at your fingertips. And then, like I said, please let me know in the comment section what you think. So for those of you who have stuck around to the end, I have a couple of teasers for you. Um, my Amish friend is gonna be bringing me a special ingredient that I can pick up next weekend hopefully he won't forget, at our farmer's market. And I'm gonna show you how to make something really special and delicious for fall with it. So I'm really excited about that. So stay tuned for that, cause you won't wanna miss it. It's something really that I've made before and I really love it, but you need something kind of special to make it. So he's gonna be bringing me that. So keep an eye out for that. And this canned tomatoes for green tomatoes for frying. Now. I haven't confirmed that I like this method yet. Um, and I have a video on canning green tomatoes for frying. We all love green tomatoes, right? And um, I did research, extensive research on ways to preserve them. Um, but the only ways that we've had so far that have been researched and tested and they can say is safe is the same for any other tomato. And I do have a video on pressure canning green tomatoes for frying. And that's okay, they're much softer than I prefer. It's certainly not like a frying up a fresh green tomato, but it is nice to have them on your shelf. They do in a pinch in the winter when you are hungry for a fried green tomato. So it just got me thinking to try to do more research on frying green tomatoes and what I could do to preserve them that would help maintain the integrity of the texture. So as I was making pickles, <laughs> I've been making lots of pickles because the one thing we have been getting from our garden is cucumbers. So I've been making lots of pickles and I got to thinking, why not pickle them? Because, and I came across recipes for pickling green tomatoes and they do not need to be canned for nearly as long when they're pickled. I think they only had to be water bath canned for 10 minutes. I'll have to confirm that I've done so much canning this week, I forget. But I'm pretty sure it's around 10 minutes for a pickled green tomatoes. Plus that delicious dill flavor in the background, I'm thinking, hmm, we might be onto something here. Uh, 
fried dill pickles are a thing, why not fried green tomatoes that are dilled? So I haven't opened my jar yet because I wanted them to sit on my shelf a little bit and um, get so I could get a real um, idea of what the flavor is going to be like. Because if you've ever made dill pickles, you know that they need to sit for a while for you to really get an idea of how they're going to taste. So I'm going to let them sit for a little longer. I'm not sure how much longer, but a little longer. And then I'm going to open them and I'm going to see if the texture of them is better than what we know to be safe so far. So little teaser there. Um, I'm hoping I have high hopes for this. So anyway, that's it for today's video. Uh, thanks for coming along with me. To all my new subscribers, welcome. To those of you who have been subscribing, liking, sharing, all that my videos, I just appreciate you all so much. And my channel has just really grown and I, I'm amazed at how many people watch my videos. This was all my husband's idea. I didn't think a single person would wanna watch them when I started and now I have. For me, it's a, quite a following, it's certainly not anything by YouTube standards, but for me, it's a following. And it's it's uh, it's touching to me that I have that many people who are interested in what I have to say about being a housewife and cooking and cleaning and all those fun things. So anyway, thank you all so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. So go out and have a great day and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.